My name is Sing Tian. I'm one of the uh, recent graduate from Tech Ladies. So I'm still a beginner like uh, most of you guys. So <laughs> we, in this session, I hope that we are learning from each other. So those who are experienced, please bear with me. <laughs> yeah, today I'm going to talk uh, about uh, API. So how many of you have used API before? Quite a number. So according to Wikipedia, API means application <laughs> programming interface, blah, blah, blah. So what exactly API means? So I'm going to explain it in more uh, layman term for those who don't know what is API. So um, take API as a restaurant. So imagine you are sitting beside the table with a menu in your hand. So you're going to order food. So after you order, all you need to do is just wait for the food to be served in front of you. So you won't care. Um, the food is served by who, how is it being prepared, what is it being made of. Yeah. So what you need to get um, is just the food being served in front of you, that's all. So API is the same. So the food will, uh, the, your order will be the HTTP request that's being sent to the system. So what is being returned, the response is actually the food that's in front of you. So probably you need this uh, specific uh, function, for example, um, speech to text uh, function. All you have to do is just to call the API. You don't have to care what happened behind the screen, uh, how complex is the process. You just have to call and then you can use it. So put it back in our uh, real life example. So I believe that all of you are very familiar with uh, flight booking. We will just go to the flight uh, website. After that, we key in where we want to go and also um, the date of our flight. And then they will return us uh, what are the flights that are available and also what are the prices. How if today you do not want to access to all this uh, data through the flight uh, website itself? If let's say you want to make a comparison, for example, I believe all of you have used Skyscanner before because all of us want to get the cheapest flight possible. So what uh, Skyscanner do? Have you guys want, ever wonder what happened behind Skyscanner? So basically, Skyscanner send a request over to, to call the API from different flight company or travel agency. And they will return the response back into this website, which is what we see. The comparison of all the prices and the uh, the flight. So I'm going to go into a bit more details. So um, there is a certain ways, certain fixed ways of writing APIs. So uh, for web APIs, for now the two most commonly used one is actually SOAP API and REST API. So REST API um, is the most commonly used for now. So I'm going to focus more on REST API. Imagine you have a pool of users that you can actually um, perform some action on it. You can uh, perform a CRUD. So what CRUD stands for is create, read, update, and delete. So you can look, have a look at the API. It's actually stated there that it allows you to create, view, update, and delete the user. But this creates an issue whereby if, let's say, every developer actually want to create their own API, and if, let's say, they do not have a standard of doing this, so, for example, today I want to retrieve a list of users. I can just put the API as view underscore users, or I can put it at users slash all. So how do we know that? What are the URL referring to? So we have to keep going back to the documentation to check what is the URL referring to. So by using REST, we can just standardize it. So for example, if let's say you want to retrieve um, a list of user, the URL will be slash users. And if let's say you want to refer to certain ID, it will be users slash one, two, three. Later on, I'm going to uh, actually demo a bit about this. So get, post, put, delete, if let's say you're not familiar with it, is actually to perform the CRUD action that I mentioned just now. Get is to uh, retrieve, to read, is the R. Post is to create, the C. Put is 
input is to update the U and delete is the D. So why do we want to use API? I tried to search um, Google, I tried to Google how long it takes to actually build a speech to text uh, function. If let's say you want to use it in your own application and what is being commented by people is actually don't do it. Don't invent the wheel. It actually required a, a pool of very talented engineers. It required a lot of time, a lot of energy. And by just using API, for example, during my last hackathon, we are able to create an application that able to convert speech to text function by using IBM Watson uh, API. And we did it within 24 hours. So if let's say today you have a product that you need to, you have an idea that you need to verify fast, so this will be the way. So since today is actually the theme is Ruby, so I will have to show some code. <laughs> so this is just a very simple code to actually call the uh, API. What I use is um, a Ruby gem called Rash client, and then I put get. This is a rebuild API that actually helps us to retrieve a list of uh, upcoming events, technical talks, technical events. So after that, I turn it into a data. Okay, so I'm going to demo um, some part of the, the thing that I mentioned just now using Postman. So Postman is an application that you can actually use to test your apps, uh, test your API. So this is just a simple uh, database that I have created just now in the evening. So let's see. So if you guys remember, get the, one of the action get is to retrieve the list of the user. So this is the user that is being saved uh, under the database. So you can see the result actually just written right below. So what if I put it into post? So for example, so post is for you to um, create a new user. So you just have to insert username, email, age. So you reflect right below. So the ID is five. Later on, if we type in So you will get the data that I just keyed in just now. So what if you want to update the user? So you will just put. You can just change it here. For example, I want to change the age, become 25. So I'll just send. Yep, the age has been changed to 25. So puts is used to update the um, details as in the data of the user. So the last one, delete, you just have to key in users slash the ID of the um, user that we key in just now. You press send. Yep, it has been deleted. So when we go back to the main... You won't see the one that we just keyed in just now, ID5. It's already being deleted from the database. Yeah, so that's basically what I'm going to talk today. Thank you. <laughs> any questions? Oh, um, do you have <laughs> any questions? Yeah. Where is the data safe? Where is the data safe? I create a, a new Rails apps and then I create a new database. So it's being saved there. It's under the local machine for now. Oh. Yeah. So it's in your computer? Yeah. And, uh, and 
Anyone else? I mean, yeah, for it. Can you use the text to speech for Watson? Did you use a gem or you went to Bloom? We just call the okay because that time um, I'm not the one that programmed, but based on what I know, we just call the uh, URL from the our application. Oh, okay. Is there a gem you use? I don't remember. Maybe can I ask someone else to answer? Uh, for those who are Ruby programmers, you can also chip in and answer. You know, it's not necessary. Right? So, okay. is there a gem for us? <coughs> Get the person that program. Yeah, can you, can you ask a okay, question? I can, I can just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Any any other questions? Okay, everyone, thank you so much, Cynthia.